Today, old meets new with a cottage style, and I'm so excited to show you. Welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. For this DIY, we are gonna take this picture frame I thrifted very recently for $1.99. Great deal, great quality, love it. I'm also gonna take this two by two I already had on hand in my garage, and I'm gonna cut four pieces to fit behind the box. So I believe the, or not behind the box, behind the picture frame. The picture frame was 14 by 12, and then the pieces of wood I cut were nine by, was it nine by 12, I believe, yes. That way it fits behind it. Um, you're not gonna see it through the opening, but it's also gonna be hidden behind the actual frame. I'm gonna secure it in place using brad nails and that's it. It's gonna be very simple. It's not gonna be heavy, so it does not need anything stronger. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my date. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at Once it was nicely secure, we are going to paint the inside first. I'm gonna give it three coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. This is because once I cover the back because it's going to be a box I won't be able to easily paint so we're going to make sure that it's painted and um, once I have the inside painted it's then time to start adding some fairy lights these fairy lights I get a box of 12 on Amazon I do have them down in my Amazon store so if you want to check out one of some of my favorite Amazon supplies and tools I do have the link down in the description box so here we go guys so my first thought with these fair lights was to um, staple them in place so i'm going to leave the little on and off battery pack outside of the box and i'm going to go all around stapling until because it's pretty long these fairy lights are pretty long so it's going to go around actually twice and so my first thought was i'm going to staple it all around and it was working fine it was working fine until it wasn't <laughs> because this happened Yep, it turned off on me. The wire is actually pretty small, pretty thin. And I, um, when I stapled it, it cut the wire. So it cut off the electrical part of it. So then I decided to remove them all <laughs> and start again. And this time I'm gonna screw in several screws in each corner. So basically one in each corner or two in each corner, one on each side, if that, you see what I'm talking about. And that way, instead of stapling it, I can just kind of wrap it around each screw. And it is a wire, so, um, that, you know, you can just, like, tie it around and it stays pretty in place. So it worked out really well this way. And I wish I would have thought about this before, but in my mind, I thought, oh, yeah, I'll staple it. <laughs> well, I learned my lesson. Well, thankfully, the box of Fairlight brings 12, and um, I was able to have extra ones. So now we're just wrapping it around. Again, it's going to go around twice. And I'm going to make sure to leave that little box of the battery and the on off switch outside of the box. I then took 10 of these painter sticks and I removed about a half inch of the one side. I'm also going to make sure that um, when I'm putting them on that they're going to alternate like the little circle wavy area is going to alternate one up and one down that way they can all be evenly spread out. I did give them two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and let it fully dry. So now it's time to start closing the back of the box. So as you can see, I'm still making sure that the little light box or the little battery box is going to be outside um, very carefully, of course. We don't want to mess with that wire. So we're just placing them here in the back and I'm making sure that they're all, like I said, evenly, dis uh, evenly spread that little wavy part and make sure that they are evenly placed so that you do not see it from the front. So as I'm tightening, of course, I'm making sure and there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh guys you know sometimes when you DIY not sometimes actually a lot of times when you DIY you get stuff like this and it is what it is so here we are again straightening it out and I am going to use my stapler and I am going to just staple it which is once on each um, stick on both sides Slide. 
Once that now had the box nicely put together, it's time to paint the front. I'm gonna give it again three coats of Rust Oleum chalk pen in the linen white. And we'll be done, guys. I added some blue flowers that I had from the Dollar Tree. Look how cute this box is. And what I love about it is that every season you can change it. You know, you can put Christmas, you can put fall decor, just change it as the season goes. And I think in the in the night it's gonna look beautiful when those fairy lights are on. I love, love, love how this old frame became new and I love it. For this next DIY, we are going to take this mud, my husband call it. It's, you know, that plaster like thing that you put on drywall. We have this bag from a recent project and I'm going to take three cups and put it in a big tub and add some water. I don't know how much water I added. I just added enough to where it was in cons the consistency of very thick, kind of like ice cream. You know, like you can scoop ice cream and it doesn't really fall right away unless it's melting. You'll see it here in a minute. So once I added the water that I needed and the um, mixture that I needed, I just kept stirring it until it was nicely smooth. And I'm going to show you here. See, it's on my stick there, but it's not coming off unless I tap it. So that's the kind of consistency that I got. However, that being said, I wouldn't mind having it being a little bit thicker next time I use it because I've never used this before. This is the first time me working with this plaster like mud. So now I'm just spreading it. I got this picture wall hanging at the thrift store and it was $12.99, but I actually got it for 50% off. So it was $6 or $6.50. I thought it was a great find. It's really heavy, it's solid wood. Love that about it, but it was a little outdated and an old look. So we are going to give it a new look and we are going to spread this thing all over the place. Again, first time me doing this, I've seen other creators do something similar to it, but I have never done this before. So I'm excited to get my hands dirty. Literally, this was a mess and spreading it. So right now my goal is to just have it evenly spread all over the place. I'm not looking for a specific style or design. Right now I'm just looking for the entire picture to be covered. And now this is when I start to kind of start giving it some sort of design. So I am looking for like a wavy fan out kind of look. When I'm doing this, I am barely putting pressure on my putty. Um, is it a spatula? <laughs> Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm barely putting pressure. I'm just just smoothing it out, smoothing it out. And then I let it fully dry overnight. Now I want to apologize for this awful glare on my upper left hand corner i actually whitened the length the lens on my camera so that you can see the whole picture because it's actually pretty big and the glare from the light that was right next to it got it so i apologize for that but nonetheless i wanted to show you so this is me just giving it one first coat of the rustoleum chalk paint in the linen white there's no design here i'm just basically painting it so that it has a crisp white um look to it the base to it but then once i painted it i wanted to add a little bit of a um more of a cottage feel so i added chiffon cream from rustoleum chalk paint and i tried to do it where it was kind of fading up so it's going to have a kind of like an ombre look where one color meets the other and so like you see here i started on the bottom with a heavier coat and then as i work my way up it started to fade more and more and more and more i did have to blend in some white here and there once again to make sure the transition from the cream to the white was as smooth as possible and i wish again that glare was not there so i apologize i'm also spritzing it with my spritzer because it's easier to blend 
both colors when the paint is not drying on you and it's just enough like it's really wet so that's when you see me spritzing that's what i'm doing but here's the final look and the camera doesn't do it justice but there's that cream color at the bottom that goes all the way up and it just fades into the white and i just love this if there's any artwork that i have ever created that i have loved more it's this one i love how that old picture wall hanging got a new look and it's absolutely stunning for this next diy i'm going to take this little tin vase here i thought it was super cute it had so much character but it was really looking old so let's give it a new look i'm going to use once again rustoleum chalk pen in the linen white and for this first coat guys we are truly just painting it just getting it on there there's no technique it's basically making sure that all of the brown is painted white For the second coat, I decided to give it more of a, like, instead of brushing the, the paint, I just want to dab the paint. This is going to give it a very textured, old looking, almost like this paint has been on this vase for many, many years. And it's just crackled and it's just very textured. And that's exactly what I was looking for right there. I just love how instead of brushing it on, if you dab it on, it gives you this look. And we're going to do it again here in a little bit on another DIY. We are going to distress this vase because boy, does it have texture. And anything that has texture, it just, to me, if you distress it, you allow those textures to pop. So I'm gonna focus just on the texture and the edges. So I started with the bottom base and I'm just going to wet distress it. So I basically wet a rag and I am just going to keep rubbing it until the paint starts to come off. But you have to be careful. You wanna make sure you stop at the right time. So just give enough pressure if you're gonna do this. Give enough pressure so that paint removes. Once you start seeing remove, kind of lightening it because otherwise you can you can possibly take too much no big deal you can always paint it again but who wants to do that right <laughs> so i did the edges the base and i'm also going to do the front and the back because once again that beautiful texture is stunning and once we are finished with this we're done i'm going to add some blue florals that i got recently at the dollar tree look how stunning this vase is it's probably one of my favorites from today i absolutely love it For this next DIY, we are going to take this faux cutting board. It's more decorative. It's not an actual cutting board. It's not even real wood. It's MBF board. So it's okay though for what I needed. It was a little message board. So I removed the little letters and I'm going to give it just a quick scrub. And then we are going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk pen and the linen white. The first coat is going to be very simple once again just giving it the regular brushing kind of coat and if you notice i'm doing a horizontal brush strokes that way and the reason why i'm mentioning that is because for the next one i am going to do it the opposite way we're going to do it vertically this is another technique that i actually use even on furniture when i'm flipping and it gives it a very unique texture and look it's not something that stands out a lot but it does give it a very subtle texture that I really enjoy almost like fabric and then for the third coat I decided to dab it again <laughs> I really love the way it looked on the vase and I thought why not let's try it on this too just to add even one more layer of texture so I'm just dabbing 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 and um, let it fully dry I'm going to take my sanding block here and I'm just going to start distressing the edges, mainly focusing on the edges, but actually pretty heavy on the edges. As you can see, I'm giving it a little bit more muscle to make sure that that brown is popping through very nicely. I did also take a flat mini screwdriver and I did um, 
put it in in all those little slits that were already there to make sure that if any paint got in there that it, it would be removed and also just kind of crisped up those edges in those lines and that's it guys this one turned out absolutely stunning i love the simplicity of it but i also love how it has a lot of levels of texture including the lines the ridges that were already there I really, really love how it went from an old message board to a brand new cottage style decor. And I just, what can I say? I love it. So this is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Would you like do me a favor and let me know in the comments which one is your favorite? And if you really enjoyed the video, give me a big thumbs up. You know, giving me a thumbs up on this video allows it to reach more people and, and helps my channel grow, actually. I'm also going to have a playlist here with tons more of inspiration for you. Check it out. I'll see you later and I hope you have a blessed day. Bye.